Parents, if your child has suddenly developed an onset of motor tics, anxiety, OCD, brain fog, exhaustion, emotional and behavioral dysregulation, gut issues, and is getting sick all the time, and when this stuff comes, it comes really, really fast, and you find you and your family living on this emotional roller coaster, not figure, not being able to figure out what's really going on with your child, and maybe you've taken that even further, and you've gone to the pediatrician, you've gone to the neurologist, you've gone to the specialist, and you still are left feeling dismissed and feeling confused as to what's really going on and how it all ties together. I want you to know this right out of the gates of this video. There is hope and there is light at the end of the tunnel. If those symptoms, and especially with the sudden onset and the kind of here and then gone roller coaster sort of behavior, if you will, to these disorders, if that sounds like your child, it's very likely that they are struggling with two complex, one of two complex disorders, either pandas or PANS. And we're going to break down those acronyms. We're going to break down those definitions. We're going to break down the neurophysiology and the science behind them. And we're going to get into drug-free action steps you can take to help your child heal through these tough, complex, confusing as heck disorders and get to the other side. And that is a tough journey for a lot of families because these are tough conditions. Even just the names, which we'll get to in a little bit, they're tough to freaking pronunciate, let alone or pronunciate, enunciate. See, there we go. I can't even use those words correctly when talking about pans and pandas. So I'm going to have some fun out of the gates in this video because this is tough stuff. So for the last 10 years, we have seen more and more of these cases, and it used to just be teenagers. Now it's even as young as grade schoolers and before start to come down with these infections because that's where a lot of this stress begins. But we'll actually dig deep and you'll see that there's kind of this relay race happening between the nervous system, the immune system, and then the, you know, medically they would call it the psychiatric system, which is where the emotional anxiety and behavioral dysregulation comes from. But that's why this is tough to tackle because it's not a singular system and there's not a singular cause or trigger to these pandas and pans disorders. There is a lot going on. And one of the real challenges right in the thick of this opening address here is that medicine really struggles to help families in a conventional standpoint. Number one, because everybody is siloed in the medical system. You've got your general pediatrician, then you've got your neurologist who looks in this window, then you've got your gastroenterologist that looks in this window, and then you have your immune system doctor, your immunologist that looks in this window, and your geneticist over here. And what happens for families is you go to all these different specialists for all these different symptoms that are kind of tethered together here with pandas and pans, and nobody gives you one cumulative answer as to what's really going on. So we're going to really get into the thick of it with this video. We're going to get pretty nerdy. We're going to go through a lot of big words, but I promise you this, we're going to keep it really simple, really straightforward, and really actionable at the same time. Because for the last 10 years, our clinic and myself have really specialized in taking care of these tough cases. And what you're going to see is to simplify it for the sake of simplification, we need to address the two-part problem that is pandas and pans with a two part clinical protocol. But the most important thing I want you to take home from this video is the order with which we address this and take care of kiddos struggling with pandas and pans is the most important thing. And for families, that's really difficult because when you have this multitude of symptoms in a multitude of different systems within the body show up almost overnight all at once, you want to take this multi, you know, take everything on all at once approach to get your kiddo to heal. But the one thing I want to say right out of the gates is that what we know with pandas and pans is that that child, that patient's nervous system is not only stressed out, not only disorganized and dysregulated, but it becomes exhausted. And so what we need to do is we need to be patient and persistent, and we need to really put the healing mechanisms in the right order to get maximum results in not only the short term to get your child out of the storm. They may be stuck in right now, but here's what I, here's what I really want you to know we're gunning for with this video. To get you to the other side of the pandas and the pandas, what we call perfect storm, and then keep you, keep your child healthy, stable, resilient, and able to not only get to that other side of these stressors and these challenges, but stay there and get back to that full expression, high quality, optimal life as well on the other side. So let's start to break this down. Number one, let's give you the nerdy definition. PANDAS stands for 
pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorders associated with streptococcal infections. Say that 15 or two times real fast. So what it means is we see it in kids most commonly, pediatrics. What it means is that we have an autoimmune component and a neurological neuropsychiatric component. And then the final two words there, streptococcal infections, is we have something that really hits the hot button. What happens with these latent, lingering, loitering strep infections is the location. So we're running out a bunch of L words here. What happens with strep infections and where they set up shop, it's an opportunistic infection that for a lot of kiddos, because we've overused antibiotics and all these things will break down so much, our kids' nervous systems, even before pandas and pans sets in place, our kids' nervous systems are already stressed out, disorganized, dysregulated, and maybe even exhausted. So what happens is we lower their resistance. We lower, no, I shouldn't say we, but the medical system, their, their resistance, their neurological adaptability, their immune responsiveness is lower. We have the sickest, most stressed generation of kids ever. And so what this has done is it's created an opportunity for opportunistic infections like strep to set up shop and stick around more often than they should. But what happens when we study pandas, and we'll go to pans next because it's very similar. It can just be a different group of pathogens that gets to it, is when you really break down the case history, you often will see exactly that, that a streptococcal infection, some sort of illness. So we see big, sp big spikes and peaks of pandas and pans and anxiety and motor tics and all these sort of things in the spring and the fall when these infections are more likely to set up shop in the system. But you'll see it then trigger the onset of these neuropsychiatric or neurological disorders. But I want you to keep digging with me. When we take our job as nervous system focused pediatric chiropractors and we go all the way back to the beginning of life for kids struggling with pandas and pans, we actually find signs of neurological dysfunction dysregulation and a term that I really want you to take home from this video called dysautonomia before the strep infection even set up shop. So I want you to map out with me here is that we actually often are dealing with dysautonomia, so nervous system stress and dysregulation first, which then opens the door to the strep infection to get in, to set up shop, to stick around and get worse and as it get worse, gets worse, it comes back again into the nervous system, into the vagus nerve and the autonomic nervous system, and it makes an already stressed, already overwhelmed nervous system even more stressed, even more anxious, even more tense. And so that's where the muscle pain and the motor tics come from. And so it's neurological, then immunological, and then neurological again. Now, the reason I needed to map that out, and I know I probably should have a whiteboard and be drawing this all out for you so you can see the visuals of this. You got my hand gestures and my nerdy words, is this. Medicine, traditional, conventional pediatrician neurologists, they're gonna miss all of this. They're just not gonna do a good job finding this. Second though, you go into holistic, integrative, functional medicine, and they are rightfully, accurately, but perhaps incompletely going to blame the infections and target the immune system component all by itself. And the most important thing I can have you parents really be able to pick up from this video about pandas and pans, and I know we're going deep and I know we're going intricate, is the original stressor is actually trapped into the central and autonomic system first and then ends up back there again later. So the most awesome, exciting thing about understanding this neuropathophysiological pathway that leads to this perfect storm of pandas and pans is that we have to go all the way back to the foundational dysregulation, dysfunction, and dysautonomia of the nervous system to get it out of there. Now, I already started to get into the three-step process and perfect storm components of this, but I want to just give you the definition of pans as well. Pans is the pediatric acute onset neuropsychiatric syndrome. So oftentimes other stressors, other things like influenza, pneumonia, RSV, or even food poisoning, or a bad fall, a, a concussion, or a neck injury can trigger things like PANS, PANDAS, and also POTS, which is a very similar conversation because it roots in dysautonomia and vagus nerve insufficiency, but we're getting a little bit more focused on the immune strep PANS connections here. So the question is this, so are we dealing with a neurological disorder? Yes. Are we dealing with an immunological challenge? Yes. So in what 
order can we most help a child? Because what we know is that once this perfect storm vicious cycle sets in, the body is going to be filled with inflammation. That is why the child is so sensitive to certain foods or certain illnesses. And all of a sudden overnight, they're sick, inflamed, and out of gas again. But the original trigger of that, again, is something called subluxation and dysautonomia. So what I want to do for the final chapter of this video is I want to really break down that component and teach you not only what it is, but how to find out if that's the real foundational, true root root cause of your child's pandas and pants. Now, I'm not trying to be annoying and over the top by saying root root twice, but I want you to stick with that analogy. I know I already kind of put myself in a little corner of this video as we're looking at an HRV scan on a panda's kiddo, but the way the nervous system works is the central and autonomic nervous system really is the roots of this tree. And then you have things like the trunk, which is the gut and the immune system. And so we really got to get down deep to really take care of things in this way. And so what we're looking at with this is we're looking at an HRV exam of a child whose nervous system is completely sympathetic dominant. So when we look at this and we see this little white dot over here to the left, that means they are stuck on sympathetic dominance. So they are stuck in that sympathetic fight or flight storm, which is going to leave their body in a pro-inflammatory state, which is going to leave their body in a pro-anxiety, tension, motor tick sort of state. So this is too much gas pedal tension. And then when you're on the sympathetics for too long, what happens as well is the body then goes down this way on this axis and it becomes exhausted as well. Evidently my Apple Pencil is exhausted and doesn't want to help me out on this. But when we find on this HRV exam, which I'm going to leave you with this, that is by far and away the most important test to get on your kiddo with pandas and pans. Now I know because we're dealing with these ongoing strep infections and this neuro, gastro, immunological, inflammatory cascade that running functional med, integrative med labs may seem like the first most important move. I want to get you to see that they are, but maybe that's 1B. We work hand in hand with an incredible functional medicine team and so do all of our PX docs around the world because what it really takes to get a kiddo out of this pandas, pans, perfect storm is both. But the most important thing that you can take home from this video is we actually have to get the nervous system out of that sympathetic storm, activate the vagus nerve on that HRV, move it towards the green, get it to a more resilient, adaptable healing state, and then we can go at the inflammation and the immune system dysfunction. And so if you've tried to support your child's immune system, you've tried to attack inflammation and bring it down, and you've gotten some change, but not all the way better, and you know they're still sensitive to these seasonal changes, to these infections, to all these things, the missing link, the missing first foundational step may just be addressing dysautonomia, vagus nerve dysfunction, and subluxation on our website and linked with this video. Wherever you're watching this video, I promise you somewhere nearby is a link to our website where you can read not only our articles about pandas and pans, but you can read more about the vagus nerve, about the perfect storm, about dysautonomia, subluxation, and the sympathetic nervous system. Because that is where the real answers lie to get into the action steps, to get your child's nervous system healing first, so it can better support immu immune system and inflammation healing. And you do so in that sequence and in that order. And I promise you this, this two-step, two-phase approach, which may, takes, may, may, may take many months to get done all together, that's the pathway, that's the roadmap to get your child to the other side of their pandas and pans challenges. And when you do this with the best nervous system focused chiropractors like that in the PX docs and then pair up who and then they partner up th with you and with your functional med, with your integrative doctors, that's the process to get to the other side of the storm and stay on the other side of the storm. This is a complex multi-layered challenge. So please, any questions or any more information you need, comment below, send us a DM, hit those links, go read those articles, 
learn more about the neurologically focused approach to pandas and pans and how when you pair it with the functional med and integrative health approach, that's where real, complete, drug-free drug healing can happen for your child. We're here always for hope, answers, and drug-free help. Anything you need, reach out. We've got you. You've got this. We'll see you on the next one.